Welcome back to the channel. We are getting into some meat and potatoes of this build now. This is my, my favorite part. All the welding and, and fabricating, that's the part I like. So we'll go over what we got going now. So we made a little bit of room. We opened up some stuff for the intercooler. The intercooler will sit right behind there. Got all the parts and pieces cut out of it. These went somewhere in there, like behind here, you know, whatever. So that's gone. And the bumper support fits right snug. Ooh, can't even see nothing. It's in there, I promise. But we got all kinds of room to play in here with the bumper on. And the intercooler, we uh, started. We decided to go with the uh, four-inch uh, charge tubes. So this is the uh, what the this is the Treadstone intercooler. It's a twelve by twenty-two wide and six inches thick, and it comes with the three-inch inlets and outlets. But we're gonna go with four-inch tubes. So this is what the original comes with, and this is what uh, I welded on. Uh, just a piece of tubing there. We, we cut it out, obviously. And uh, this piece of tubing welded the, the V-band. We've got the Mishimoto quick release. And then, I don't think you can see it very well, but it's all, after we got done welding, I ported everything. So it's a nice smooth transition into the intercooler. But, yeah, these things are pretty neat. they have got a little O-ring in there too. Take that out obviously when you're welding it, but it'll seal everything. So with this side, it's kind of a little archaic when I was cutting it out. I just kind of put the tube up there and marked it with a marker and just started making little slits and cutting it. But this side, I'm going to go with a hole saw. So we'll hack this off and then weld in a slug. So we'll have something for the, the uh, arbor to go into to keep it straight. Because if you didn't have something to keep it, it just kind of all over the place. So once we get that in there, we'll saw that. Should be a nice cut. And we'll weld. I've been putting the O-ring o ring side on here. Cut the slug out of this. We'll crack the piece. And we've got some more parts in. We got the truck coils that we're going to use. We've got the little heat sink. We bought the ICC billet kit to remote mount everything. A lot of little nuts and bolts in there. So let's start making some cuts. One of my favorite tools. <laughs> Hover face, three inch, cut it, and we'll use this to put in as a slug. Oh, that is definitely a Harbor Freight, man. A wobbling. What the heck? There we go. Oh! my slug that I cut out of that just put a little bolt on there to, to hold it while I was just doing some booger welds and now in there. now this should help align it so my hole saw doesn't go all over the place when I try to drill I'm gonna switch over from the three inch to the four inch. 
Let's see if this one wobbles as much as the last one did. Probably will. Carver Freight. Oh, yeah. That should make a nice hole. Well, let's see what happens. See if we can take my arm off like I did cutting the other hole. Wish I had someone here to hold this thing for me. Didn't even ding up the. Didn't even get the tank on the inside. <laughs> that was my biggest worry. Yeah, because the four inch fits in there. Oh my goodness, that is like freaking perfect. I'm do a little shaving in here so I can get it in there farther. It's gonna look perfect. Yeah. Okay, about ready to start welding. Got a piece of four inch here. Probably about, about two inches long, roughly. I've uh, deburred the edges. And we'll, we'll weld here uh, on the table, just because it's easier to weld a little bit and turn it, weld a little bit and turn it. We'll take it over here and probably make, mark some, make some marks here. And we'll cut some of this stuff off on the inside so we don't have to grind it down later. When we poured it, but it, uh, acetone is your best friend when you're welding aluminum. Aluminum is real porous, and it uh, it'll hold all the dirt, and the acetone will help get the dirt out. So if you don't, then you'll get uh, the camera probably won't pick it up. But quit moving. There you go. Little itty bitty pieces it looks like pepper but it just it just brings all that dirt to the very top of your weld puddle and then when it solidifies it stays right there on top and looks ugly so if you clean it it'll look like that so that's what we're gonna do put your acetone on a clean rag and you just clean all your parts clean them up real nice get all your uh, marker marks off of it and Try to do it with some clean hands too. You don't transfer any of the dirt over. And also do the filler rod. Filler rods usually get a lot of a lot of junk off of them. I never know how many of these I'm going to need, so I just do a couple and at once. Right. A little weight on it to help hold it. Try to pop out of there when it starts welding. Aluminum is not that bad as of uh, at distorting. You know, like when you weld steel, it'll like if you're welding down here, it'll it'll pull, and once it dries, it'll kind of go back a little bit, but it'll still be crooked. Aluminum, it don't do that as bad. Well, I don't notice it anyways. If I can get some shots of me welding. Oh yeah, I forgot I dipped the uh, dipped my tungsten in the uh, aluminum last time when I was welding, so 
don't know if you can see it. <laughs> see that little ridge of aluminum? <laughs> it happens. I don't have the steadiest hands. So, we got one of these. Tungsten grinder. Stick it in there. Stick it in there and twist. Probably can't see it in there, but the thing's pretty handy. With aluminum and the inverter machines, you don't really need a, a ball on the end like you do with the older machines. So I just kind of put a little, it probably won't focus. Just put a little flat spot on it. And then weld away. Just a little bit of stick out. Probably go at about 15 CFH on the gas. Don't need a whole lot with aluminum. too bad. We'll just keep doing that over and over and over till we get all the way around. I've just made some rough lines here. Made me a little arrow so I know to keep this up top every time. And we're gonna go ahead and make some just some rough cuts around the edges. They don't have to be pretty. It'll all get smoothed out when we uh, have it all welded in there and we poured it. Never use your cutting wheel as a grinder. Pretty close. Make some final, final cuts off camera. You don't want to watch everything. Alright, it's all welded on there. Not too much light. But next step is to clean out all the uh, extra metal in there. And then we'll port the sides of it and the bottom and the top and make it all happy flowing. We're going to get a quick shot of uh, what the porting looks like after or before and after uh, the little rough edges and stuff. I'm going to flip you upside down here. Yeah? Got my cell phone inside there with the light going. So here's the, the rough edge. It's got a little lip in there. And the side has been smoothed off. As far as the, the upper two, I got a little bit there. I need to. That's just a. Oh, okay, it's a little opening. I'll clean it up with the uh, sanding wheel, but 
Anybody sick yet? That was a good shot. So once we get that sharp edge off, we'll drum it down, make it all smooth. Be ready to roll. Okay, so we got the, let's see, we got this side done. This is the last one. It's all welded on there. It's so all smoothed off on the inside. We uh, probably already saw the standoffs we got welded on. And then we got our brackets, our upper brackets welded on. Got a little gusset there. Same on that side. So now we need to work on some brackets. We're gonna put a standoff right here and go up to this tube right here. Same on this side. Hey. Hi. Another standoff there. Go up to there. All right, we're making a little standoff. We're actually making two of them. I can only put one in there at a time to hold, but these are gonna hold the bottom braces on the uh, intercooler that is mounted now. This is the, the lube I like to use for taps. We're making a, this is gonna be a bolt hole, so. I've already got my 21 64th hole drilled and we're tapping it for 10 by 1 5. Perfect. Next. So this was totally Ken's idea. Just gonna make sure everybody knows it was his idea. <laughs> but uh, you guys remember the there's a bracket that went from here and over and up to there from this on this uh, bumper support and it was in the way so we tore it off or cut it off. But now we're gonna repurpose it. So we use these. We'll weld them. Weld the standoffs and then they'll bolt right in. And we'll weld them right up there to that tube. We should have plenty of room to get them bolts loose still. Have the standoff right there. Okay, we got the standoffs welded on and our brackets, our reused brackets. Got it welded right there. That should get a nice 10 by 1 5 bolt in there. This side also. This thing is nice and sturdy. Ain't going nowhere. So next on the list is to, we're gonna use the stock fan shroud, the stock Camaro fan shroud, and mount it to this uh, Howie radiator. Howie, how, I don't know how you say it. We made some, made some little standoffs. We're gonna weld. Got it marked. Gonna weld them there. But we're gonna clean these up first, clean up the area nice, and then weld it on. My policies, my policies stand off a little bit, try and get the dirt off the surface of them. So I'm gonna use this is just a a coil bracket bolt. Drill, tighten it down, screw the sand off into it. And some emery cloth. All shiny now. Okay, all of our standoffs are welded. I need to figure out where to drill these holes in this fan shroud.
looks good. I like that. Okay, got the shroud mounted. Found some little factory GM bolts. Now I'm going to test it in 12. here somehow. You feel a lot of air getting sucked through there. We don't want that. We want it going through the radiator. So I think I got a little bit more work to do. Okay, got the radiator all mocked up. Just kind of hold it up with some wires. Don't know if I like that or not. It looks kind of cool. Made a little bracket to hold the turbo. That thing freaking huge. I don't know where we're going to be able to put that thing. Might have to uh, change the angle of this somehow. It's kind of hitting there. Kind of close there. Might have to get rid of this thing. I don't know. We'll keep playing with it. All right, I think we're going to end this one off here. we got plenty of content to make a good video. So, little stinkers back there. But, uh, yeah, on the next video, we'll uh, get to work on mounting the turbo and the radiator. Trying to figure out where we want to put all that stuff. But, till next time, we will see you later.